don't take time to look at it through other people's eyes. Take some time and reflect on what you believe in your soul. Cause that is the key to life. You gotta let the negativity go. Hello and welcome to What the Fox podcast with your two hosts, Lindsay Fox and Amber Ross. As a reminder, we are sponsored by Therapy Appointment, an electronic medical records company that was made for therapists by therapists. And in today's episode, we are going to really dive into the fact that most of us really have a disordered relationship with food. <laughs> and as we enter the holiday season of Thanksgiving and all that follows suit, this is a topic that Amber and I wanted to dive into before all the big family meals take place um, in November and December. Yeah, absolutely. And it's um, it's actually one I'm super passionate about, shock of all shocks as a wellness coach. Um, yeah, but we're definitely going to be, like... <laughs> this is your jam. So I it's... look forward to hearing what you, you bring to the table today, Missy. I appreciate is, that. And it, it is my jam for a lot of reasons, but one of those being it's something that I have had a tremendous struggle with for my whole life for as long as I can remember. Like I was the person who in, you know, October decided, well, you know, I got a lot going on to end the year with um, Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's. I'm not even going to try to eat healthy. I'm just going to go off the wagon I'm going to have all the things I love and I'm just not going to care because it's too hard around the holidays. Right. It is and that was so like hard. It is so hard. And you're right. I mean, Hall Halloween is really what does jumpstart it. To yeah. <laughs> it's like sugar, uh, sugar craving and sugar fix after sugar craving and sugar fix. I mean, mm, just like chasing yep. that next hit. <laughs> Sounds about right. And then we get so stressed over the holidays, too, because of all of the frankly, the expectations that are bestowed upon us, <laughs> all the family traditions and people that we don't want to see, but then feel like we're forced to see um, all of those things generate so much stress. And that's when, you know, your average person, I would say, at least in the United States, uses food to cope with positive experiences, negative experiences, just food is a massive part of our culture as a whole. It's a massive part of our culture. And sometimes, um, we confuse other feelings with hunger, right? So you may not be yes. intentionally saying, I'm stressed, I'm going to eat. But what you're saying or feeling is, I'm feeling this emotion, I have this feeling, I must be hungry. You know, yeah. I must need a snack. And that's often not the case. Um <laughs> It just so our brains true. play a little trick. <laughs> oh, I'm so guilty of it because I mean, I know that something that we have talked about before is like, how do we celebrate after we finish like one of our podcast recordings oh, yeah. and finally get it all <laughs> done? Amber like makes a super healthy, like smoothie type of shake. And then I'm over at my house making milkshakes. <laughs> hey. We're both <laughs> celebrating and putting food in our body, right? So like it's the same true. concept. And what I work with um, a lot of times with clients who struggle with that emotional like eating um, or disordered eating that you referred to it as um, is just swapping in some um, beneficial items to whatever you're indulging in, right? So like yeah. make it. Um, make it yummy, make it tasty, make it fill that need and also pack it full of nutrition because your body needs that. I'm not like, definitely, I am a huge advocate in focusing on the things you get to add versus the things that you quote unquote have to take away. Like that's not, I'm not a, you can't eat carbs. You can't have treats. You can't like, that's just not how I roll. And hopefully and Lindsay, you've not, realized that by now. <laughs> uh, yeah, a hundred percent. And cause it's just, I think it kind of goes hand in hand with this idea of like, you know, lots of research has already shown like punishment does not work, whether it's mm -mm. through parenting, corporal punishment, whatever, like, yeah. like that kind of stuff just does not work. But, um, you know, positive reinforcement of certain behaviors can be effective. Uh, but I just wanted to insert like a quick little disclaimer here. Whenever I mentioned um, disordered eating previously, I want to be really clear in saying that that is different than an eating disorder. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we are not talking about and we are not providing clinical advice um, about a medical diagnosis of any kind or of an eating disorder of any kind. We are talking about disordered eating, which is more or less an unhealthy relationship with food, but not one that meets clinical criteria to some kind of like healthcare diagnosis. 
Absolutely. And that's a good, it's a good clarification point. So I appreciate you rolling back to that one. Um, I did want to share, um, we mentioned just a few minutes ago that it is hard during the holidays to focus on being healthy. Now, I will not disagree with that statement in its entirety. However, I will tell you that you get to choose your heart. So you can choose to make healthy choices along with the treats in the holiday season, or you can choose not to. They both come with their own level of difficult and their own um, yes. like series of events afterward, right? Like I'm thinking, for instance, um, I eat... I ate something this week that I wanted that is not something I typically indulge in. Um, And I have been sick for three days because of it. It was something like I enjoyed eating it. I knew it was going to make me sick or I knew, let me, I knew there was a potential that it would make me feel bad. I'm like, what was it? I want to know. (laughs) Uh, It was fast food. I'll give you that. Okay. Um, Well, that makes sense for you because- Anyone I don't that eat knows fast food. you, right, <laughs> right, and on, I actually, I really don't either. But I mean, I know that your your level of nutrition is, you have a high quality type of lifestyle whenever it comes to the food that you put into your body because this is you eat and breathe this lifestyle. It is every facet yeah. of your being, and, and I do that, that because I feel so much better when I'm doing that. Like yeah. the last three days, honestly, I just keep beating my head against the wall because I'm like Amber, you knew that there was a potential that eating this was going to make you feel bad. Now, I did not yeah. believe that it was going to make me feel bad for three entire days. Um, so, yeah, you know, you you live and you learn. Uh, I enjoyed it while I was eating it and I've suffered the consequences since. So yeah. choose your hard friends. Me, I would rather choose the hard that involves uh, adding in some extra vegetables, taking a walk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I think something else too that I wanted to comment on is like you mentioned, because fast food definitely makes my brain go to this place. But whenever I think about fast food, it's like you want that instant gratification, mm-hmm. you want that fix. Um, and, and then I do think it's important, you know, whenever we're entering holiday eating realm, to really practice a state of mindfulness around are you hungry? Are you yeah. full? And because hung, hunger versus fullness are two different things because hunger is when your body is saying, I need X, Y, Z nutrition. I need these nutrients or what, whatever it is. Whereas fullness is really more about, you know, it's, it's that want versus need. So I think hunger is more of that need, whereas fullness, um, you might be completely absent minded about the fact that you're just munching away at a thing of popcorn or bag of chips or whatever it is. Well, and I see this happen a lot at gatherings, and it's something that I caution people on, um, that like we have a tendency, at least in my family, to sit at the table where the food is sitting, Located. right? So like, we'll, <laughs> we'll do a buffet style, but then all of a sudden, everybody's chairs are around the buffet, and we're all like talking and snacking and just like grabbing stuff, and none of us are realizing that we're eating food, we're just consumed with the fact that oh it's here it looks really good it smells really good i must be hungry so i must eat it where i encourage folks like move yourself or move the food to a separate room unless you're truly hungry and you're ready to mindfully eat and like smell the foods that you're eating look at the food you're eating like enjoy the process of eating the food instead of just like mindlessly shoveling I mean, Um. it's, it's so true (laughs) just because I'm thinking like, hello, the number one hangout spot is the kitchen. Always. Like, I don't care what holiday party you go to. It is always the kitchen where the best stuff goes down. (laughs) Well, and you know, you've come to my house and we always hang out in the kitchen. Now there's not always like food sitting right in front of us while we're hanging out in the kitchen. Cause I try to be mindful and like, just get it it, one of the things that we say is out of sight, out of mind, right? So if you're not right. staring at it, you're probably not thinking about it unless it's something you need. I mean, um, probably. <laughs> I, look, I just full disclosure here. I am one of those people where it, if food is sitting in front of me, I am going to eat it. Yeah. It is not because I am necessarily hungry. It's because I love the sensory aspect of eat like touching the food smelling the food tasting the food tasting different foods like yep. I, and i am i am not a good um leader whenever it comes to this stuff because i love all i love all the flavors but well, i do recognize there's a there's a space for like moderation and being mindful about like 
okay, it's time to like roll it back. <laughs> yeah. And you know, oftentimes in especially diet culture and like our old mindset, we get in that I can't have that because X, Y, Z, or I can't do this because of whatever. And it, that I can't trigger something in our brains to then that's the only thing we think about. Because if yes, it's like, like saying, don't tell me, like, think about your, or don't think about your favorite food. It's like yeah. saying that. that was so it's like, I'm going to think about, about it. it nonstop and now I need it. Like, yeah. I'll give you a, for instance, that I've dealt with in the last three-ish months. My esthetician, I battle um, adult hormonal acne and have forever and ever. Um, but my esthetician said, hey, uh, peanuts are a major um, contributor to acne, to hormonal acne sometimes. You know, it can be a trigger, um, not like it can set your body up to have those outbreaks. She said it more eloquently. She did a better job of explaining it. I'm I not think you're doing great. <laughs> but I said, holy crap. I eat peanut butter like in all the time. I have peanut butter literally all the time. And I said, okay, well, I'll switch it to almond butter. Do you know, I never thought about peanut butter. I never craved peanut butter. It was just like part of my routine, something I put in like a little PB fit into my shake. As soon as I was told I couldn't have peanut butter, I'm like, man, those peanut butter cookies sound really good. And I'm like, you don't even like peanut butter cookies. Never once in your life have you said, <laughs> I want a peanut butter cookie. But because somebody told me that I couldn't have it or I shouldn't have it, it was like the only thing I wanted. <laughs> and the most appealing, obviously. <laughs> it was the most appealing option, obviously. I'm like, what? I don't like it. My brain. <laughs> I mean, I totally hear that. I felt like that with, um, I mean, very different um, condition, but I have chronic Lyme disease. That's not something I've really ever disclosed or had the need to disclose on this podcast, but I was diagnosed with having Lyme in 2015. And uh, as a result of that, and just to be clear, I don't know if it's the Lyme or the medication that I was overprescribed, which is another, uh, frankly, medical horror story. But anyway, yeah. whatever the case, it completely destroyed my gut health. And it changed so many things that I could consume to the point where I really, uh, there was a, a three years of my life that I really had to like dive in and explore what can I eat versus not eat without having mm -hmm. a reaction. And I know one of the things that I had, I eliminated first and foremost, um, was every single thing dairy. <laughs> That's a long list, girl. Like, And I mean, and I love, I mean, I just finished talking about milkshakes. So clearly I figured out a way to navigate the situation, but yes, you did. I mean, so my, <laughs> my, I have to tell you, eliminating all dairy, all forms of, you know, I love all types of cheese, this, that, and the other. So it's like, this was so hard, hard for me, but because I was like going through this process of like a food elimination diet, yeah. uh, FOD, FODMAPS is what it's known as, but it's not, it's really not so much of a diet as it is a lifestyle and just figuring out what you can and cannot consume. Yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, you know, so I think even the word diet, as I, as I'm talking about this, it's like dieting itself generates so much stress and then stress feeds into our need to eat mm -hmm. to cope which then leads us to gain weight or have feelings of guilt and la 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 and then that feeds into dieting which feeds into stress and that's cycle well, just it's keeps like repeating. the hamster wheel that you just can't ever escape and right. i mean i i tell people all the time i'm like man diets are so 1990 like we don't diet anymore <laughs> they we are. don't do that <laughs> like we are not living in the 90s anymore much to our uh fashion Chagrin. trends dismay, right? <laughs> like <laughs> I see all the styles come back, but truthfully, you what mean, I you mean, like what, what I'm wearing, right what now. you're wearing right now. <laughs> yes. You've got all the nineties, like the headband. I, I love it, but I did. I'm going to go on a little tangent here. Um, anybody listening who is finding themselves really attracted to nineties, um, fashion, I challenge you to uh, look at our eyebrows from the 90s and just come on back to 2022 because we did not have it going on. <laughs> like, wow, we, we really did just go down a foxhole. We went down a little foxhole <laughs> because um, I do like the 90s, but there's some stuff that can stay back there. And that's diets and the eyebrow trends because oh my they were gosh, not it. I love it. Um, that is but, hysterical. <laughs> Um, I did want to say, um, along the vein of, you know, choose your hard and holidays are hard and all of that. Yes. And yes. However, the reality is there's like, what, five holidays between October and January 
well, I mean, there's more than that, but if we're talking about, and it depends um, on religion too, it does depend on religion and what you celebrate. So we'll say five to 10 or five to 12 it, to be inclusive. Um, yeah, many, a lot, <laughs> a lot. Okay. But there's over 60 days in total. If we think about the months. So if you think of it in relation Try to practice a holiday instead of a hall a month, because I can tell you when I worked out of the office full time um, from October, November and December, there were potlucks every week. There was some kind of celebration where, you know, the sales teams were going out for drinks after work. And it was just like ongoing every single day. So I was overindulging every single day and feeling miserable because of it, where if I had just said, hey, you know what, I'm going to choose one day this week. I'm going to choose two days this month. I'm going to, you know, whatever that is, I'm going to yeah. treat myself. Um, but it's not going to be every day because I honestly, I didn't feel good and it wasn't worth it. And I mean, it's not you, like from a health perspective, not a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you are bringing up a great point though, because with holidays and especially in the workplace for those who are working in a, uh, I say normal, I don't even know what normal is anymore. Yeah, there's no half, half people work from home now, so I don't know. But, you know, people who are working in an office environment or a hospital setting or whatever it is where you are with your coworkers face to face, there is so much pressure to connect as a team through food or through alcohol, whatever field of work you're in or industry or after work or whatever. And it is just such a normalized part of the workplace culture. Like if you if you want to connect with your colleagues, you're going to go out after work from time to time or but especially whenever it's around the holidays, there's more of an expectation of like, oh, come on, guys, like, let's do this or let's have it could be maybe you have Friendsgiving, you have Thanksgiving, and then you have a work Thanksgiving. And it's like, oh, great. So now we're going to be like, (laughs) like overindulging three times in one week, and then, you know, hit the Black Friday sales thereafter. (laughs) Well, and it all feeds into that exhaustion and that um, you're get you're filling that sugar craving over and over again. So your body gets conditioned to expect it. And then, you know, before you know it, every day you wake up, you're like, okay, what is the next um, decadent thing that I can Mm -hmm. eat and enjoy so that I can take care of my stress or I can, you know, just live my life, which man, it gets hard after a while. And I would tell you something. I had a friend bring this up to me um, that when I schedule gatherings with people, or if I want to meet up with you and hang out, cause we haven't seen each other in a while. Mm-hmm. One of the options I always give is, would you like to go for a walk? Would you like to go for a hike? Do you want to go to a park? You know, it's not always, Hey, let's go to that coffee shop or that restaurant or whatever. Right. The same thing can apply to check-ins or connection points with your teams at work. I had a manager who did this. Our meetings were walking meetings. So we oh, would go awesome. and like walk outside and talk and do what we needed to do. Mm-hmm. And it, like, I so enjoyed that because it got me away from my desk. It got me out of a chair. I got some sunshine and some fresh air. And it was just so much I less love stressful. That. that is such a great idea. And kudos to your manager, too, just because, I mean, I have, I would love to do a separate episode sometime on, on workplace culture as a, <laughs> in general, but especially just getting your, your coworkers or colleagues out and just kind of separating, it just humanizes Mm -hmm. your, you know, your lived experience as a whole. It's just, you know, you are more than your productivity hours. And sometimes it's easy to lose sight of that. But um, especially whenever it comes to the the cultural side of just connecting through food and drinking, I think the other part of this is bringing me back to that episode that we did um, with a guest speaker named Justin Brown, his episode, I don't know what number it is, but it's called Good Clean Fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's someone who shared his journey openly with us about sobriety. And it was around the holiday season that he actually made a very intentional effort to get sober. And uh, through that episode, which I want to kind of reiterate in this episode, is the fact that there there is a lot of pressure to drink and be merry. Uh, yeah. and, and that's another way to like, really take in a lot of and I don't want to focus on calories, but I am I am like saying that's a that's a big way to like pack on the calories type of thing. But I I don't necessarily think hyper focusing on calorie count is the best thing to do. But not all calories are created equal. Right. So focusing on calories is not (laughs) 
Right. And so it's just, but I mean, in terms of like the sugar content and then the, just the overall impact of alcohol on your brain's functioning, your, it affects sleep patterns. Mm -hmm. So when you, when I hear you talk about, Hey, I had fast food and I've been feeling like crap for three days. I honestly feel like that with alcohol. I have to be really yeah. mindful of how much I drink. Um, and by that, I mean, if I, I can maybe have two, two margaritas or something like that in a night, yeah. but I will know even after having that second margarita, I'm not going to sleep well and I'm probably going to feel really crummy the next day. Um, and that's just like, that's because that's how my body processes alcohol. So it's like, how, how important is it Yeah, <laughs> uh, on so many different fronts? But I think that around the holidays, we really, dive into that as a part of like f reducing that social anxiety fitting in all and, and all of those other reasons plus some you know well, and a lot of it is just a simple fact of you're in a group of people if everybody's drinking and then everybody orders a second round and everybody orders a third round like you can easily look up and go oh I didn't even want that, but now it's here and now I feel guilty. So yeah. I have to drink it or I have to eat it or have and <laughs> I do want to share like you should not feel guilted into eating anything or drinking anything or mm -hmm. feel bad. I know one of the, um, one of my clients shared with me that, um, people would present her with food that they had made and she would feel guilty. So she would feel like she had to eat it right that minute, whether she was hungry or not. And it, because she was being gifted with something thoughtful from someone and she didn't want to hurt their feelings. Right. And something we worked out together is, you know, say, thank you. Accept the food. Yes. I'm going to save it for later. You know, I'm not hungry right now, but I'll enjoy it. I appreciate that. You know, put yeah. it, um, put it in the fridge, put it in the freezer, do whatever you need to with it, but don't feel like in that moment, someone has presented you, you know, grandma's got her pie in her hand and she's like, eat yeah. this now you have to eat it. No, you don't. Like you can respectfully say that looks amazing. I really appreciate it. And like, take a pause yeah. because the food pressure is real. And I mean, that's something I've experienced and it's, it's uncomfortable and it can be hard to navigate. You're so right about that. And I think this comes back to why we talk about empowered boundary setting in so many mm. different episodes, because boundaries are needed in every facet of our life. Even if it is to say, you know, thank you, but no, thank you. I'll pass or I'll take water instead. Or, you know, yeah. I just, I prefer to have like a hot tea and, you know, do your thing. Uh, or I'll, I'll eat this later. But I think we kind of forget about that because in general, yes, that people pleasing quality of wanting to satisfy, you know, you recognize someone has a kind gesture at play and you want to reciprocate you can reciprocate mm -hmm. that kindness through words and boundary setting there's nothing wrong yeah. with that absolutely um and it you touched on something that um i'm squirreling a little bit but it's still relevant the hot tea okay yeah so um i have found <laughs> i have found um after dinner drinks seem to be a very big thing for the crowds that i run in if um, I have, I feel like they're, they're, they're a big thing for every, anyone who consumes alcohol. Like a nightcap is definitely a thing. Yeah. A nightcap is yeah. definitely a thing. And I like, mm -hmm. um, even after work drinks or after, you know, whatever, just alcohol in itself seems to be the way yeah. that we all just like close a chapter of a day or a period of time. Yes. Um, I have found so much joy in putting different beverages in fun cups because I realized something about myself. It's often not the alcohol I'm interested in. I like the fun glasses that it comes in. I like the decorations. <laughs> I like the fanciness about it. So like I decorate random like cups of water or a cup of kombucha or, you know, whatever, hot tea. Um, I make it fancy and I make it pretty and I make it special because I enjoy that so much. And it's like, I don't need the alcohol to be able to enjoy a cool mocktail or, you know, whatever yeah. the case may be. Yeah. Um, I love that. As I'm drinking my coffee out of my coffee mug, I love, I love it. I, my, my little decorated coffee mug. I know, I definitely hear what you're saying. And I feel it's no different than like celebrating New Year's, you know, yep. New Year's, not everyone wants to drink alcohol or has any desire to drink alcohol. And it's like, that's why they have like sparkling cider, but it's like, it feels fun to ha do a toast, you know, regardless of what you're drinking to say, Hey, yeah. happy new year. Yeah. Put a water in a, good for um, you. And a Good little champagne you. flute and have a cool day. But I mean, it just, these are little tidbits that I've picked up along the way that um, sometimes I forget that are actually relevant to other people. So <laughs> yeah, they but are. I mean, I, I like that you cup. shared that. <laughs> 
It's so true, though, and I'm glad that you mention it. Um, and then on the on the other hand, whenever we're talking about like, you know, doing some of this stuff at the level, like just mindlessly eating or mindlessly yeah. drinking, um, I I just want to suggest that you know during the holidays, try to have a level of intention of checking in with yourself before you go into these events or mm, before you walk so in that door. Yeah, just kind of checking, you know, doing one of your own energy checks of like, how hungry am I right now? Um, or, you know, if you feel like you're one of those people who are going to eat mindlessly because that's kind of your style, then drink some water before you go in so that you do feel full, but also having the mindfulness of like what your hunger level is. Because again, hunger and fullness are very different, but you just check in with yourself around that I think is super important before you just go standing in the kitchen for three hours for appetizers before the meals even served. Yeah. And that, so <laughs> I agree with everything you just said. And that's something we're incorporating now uh, more than we had before is just like regular vibe checks. Like what's my vibe? How am I feeling? What, like, what do I need to be successful in this next step of my day? Um, but one thing I will tell you, I've seen folks do in the past, which, um, is more harm. It does more harm than good. Um, I will see people say, well, I've got this big, big meal for dinner, so I'm not going to eat anything all day. I'm just going to save up all of my calories for this one meal. And like, if I could tell you no more red flags, like that's all it looks like a carnival. When you tell me that, please, tell please, us please don't starve. <laughs> like, <laughs> please don't starve yourself all day and shut your metabolism down completely. And then go like have a 6,000 calorie meal there. It's just, why it is, is that bad, healthy. Amber? Teach us why this I, is bad for us. Bless your heart. Well, one thing, your digestion is just going to be a mess after that. But it sets up an incredibly unhealthy relationship with food because you're just reinforcing the fact that you can only have fun if you're eating and somehow you don't deserve to eat all day. You only deserve to eat that one meal. And mm -hmm. when you were conceived slash born slash you have been brought into existence, you earned the right to eat food. You do not earn the right to eat food by any workout. You do not earn the right to eat food, you know, because it's a certain time of day or anything like that. Like if you are hungry, eat some freaking food, put it in your face. Like <laughs> just, I can't, I used to be that person and I can remember like counting and I would sit down and like calculate all the things so I could make sure I stayed under my calorie goals so that I didn't gain weight. And like, that is so stressful and it's so much I want to say unnecessary stress. I realize that a lot of people yeah. do have success counting calories and like, I'm not going to tell you that's not um, an effective way to do it. It's not the way that I choose to do it yeah. Um, because it causes really unhealthy cycles for me. So yeah. moral of the story, eat the food. Don't save calories for a special meal. Now I mm -hmm. will tell you like, maybe don't have a piece of chocolate pie for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? Or a whole <laughs> chocolate pie uh, every day. But freaking, moderation if you want a piece of pie, have it. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. Yeah, moderation is key with all facets of yeah. life, for sure. But especially whenever it comes to our food. And then, and, and I think what gets us hung up and stuck is the guilt as, yeah. after you consume the thing that you're supposedly, you know, not supposed, or whatever, not supposed to eat. I'm using air quotes here. But really, you know, it's that. like, <laughs> yes. Just and it's so much easier said than done, as you know, yeah. though. I mean, it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of healing of looking at the origins of that and the origins of your relationship with food. Because, you know, speaking of 90s here, those of us who were raised in the same kind of, uh, well, in the same decade, I would say that Amber and I were raised in, I feel culturally it was pretty common to be a member or encouraged to be a member of the clean plate club oh <laughs> yeah you know how i feel about that <laughs> and i don't actually think that parents really you know i don't really feel like that's really a thing so much now but i definitely mm. feel with our upbringing it was more common or popular and i don't know if it was like on a sitcom i don't really know what made it so popular but i definitely know that every family that i was uh privy to meeting or a part of uh it was you know you sit down and eat your dinner and you one when, when you finish your meal you're a part of the clean plate club but you do not leave the dinner table until you have cleaned your entire plate yeah and that that uh, understanding of food at a young age also can breed really unhealthy 
um, relationship with food as you get older, because then to, you know, your client's point that you just mentioned is like, then there's this, this understanding that, oh, if it's in front of me, I have to eat it. And if I'm being gifted it, I need to do it right there in that moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, because we we get conditioned at a really young age that, you know, if you don't do it, it's bad. And, you know, yeah. that, that sticks. Those well, messages it teaches- stick. It does. And it teaches you to stop looking for actual hunger cues. And mm-hmm. it teaches you to just see a plate of food and decide you have to eat that plate of food, whether you're hungry or not. And it just, yeah, the food guilt thing and dealing with the clean plate crew, which are, you know, however you mentioned it, you clean, clean plate, plate club, club. that yeah. one. Um, my brain works sometimes. You're doing um, great. But it's hard. And it's something if you have young kids, um, I, I do. And we talk about them a lot here. We don't do clean plate club here. There are more nights, um, that my kids do not clean their plate and I am fine with it. Um, around certain boundaries, they're still eating and they're still getting nutrition, but, um, food guilt is something that a lot of us struggle with. And it's something that I don't think ever really goes away completely. But there's a lot of things you can do with mindfulness to think of, you know, why am I feeling this way? Where did this come from? What's causing it? You know, is there, um, it's often not about the food itself, right? It's about our idea of what society's told us about that food. So doing the work to release some of that shame and guilt, because um, I know I've been, I don't want to say I've been guilty of food guilt. That sounds bizarre but yeah like it's something that I've dealt with like you eat something and you're like oh I'm so bad now but there's no morality to food I guess is what I'm trying to say yeah yeah and all food has some type of value to it Um, but it just comes down to moderation so with that um, I'm not sure if there's anything else you wanted to add to to this conversation in that sense I did. I actually just wanted to give kind of a few key focus areas, something that my clients and I chat about a lot during the holidays and throughout the year, um, just to set yourself up for um, a more enjoyable experience with less food guilt and less um, gastrointestinal issues. (laughs) Yes, please. Yeah, less of that. Um, So it's six things. So prioritizing rest, which we talked about, Lindsay, you know, you go into it tired, when you're tired, you eat more. Yeah. Uh, when you eat more, you're more tired. And it's just that vicious cycle of. Um... Yeah. So adhering to like a routine, trying to go mm-hmm. to still trying to go to sleep around the same time, having that kind of consistency in your routine is Im- important. Yeah. And I say rest over sleep because for some of us, me included, mm-hmm. I have to have time to myself that is quiet with no one else present to recharge because I can. Me too. Man, I can be in the group, I can be in the pit, I can do the things, I can look like an extrovert, but when it comes down to like really refueling myself, I'm going to need a minute by myself. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Sure. (laughs) So sleep and just knowing how you recharge. Yeah. Um, One thing we didn't really talk about was um, I tend to prioritize vegetables, especially on a day that I know that I'm going to be indulging in a meal. Um, leading up to that event, I'll make sure that I have a really good variety of delicious vegetables that I enjoy because it helps me to feel full. It helps me to have energy and it makes sure that um, as I'm eating the things that I enjoy and as I'm indulging and treating myself, um, that I've balanced it a little bit as far as nutrients are concerned and my body's oh, yeah. fueled. Definitely. And I know for me, something I really enjoy is making um like a smoothie the morning. So for me, that might just be like a ton of different vegetables shoved into my, I use, I know some people like their Ninja or magic bullet, whatever, and just have it in there. I might use like a scoop of some kind of, um, booster of some kind with nutrients and that sort of thing. But it does, it does just kind of kick you off and kick off your day in the right direction. But to your point, you're probably not going to get all of those nutrients at your, um, holiday party or whatever it is that you're going to. Set yourself up for success early. Uh, Vegetables for breakfast are extra credit in my house, and I get extra credit every day. (laughs) I mean, this is that that works. Whatever works for you guys. You have vegetables with all the things, but you mentioned that there were six items. Yep. I wanted to hear your other your other items on that. So hydration, hydrate. Well, we talked about two. So the rest, the veggies, hydration. So mentioning the drinking water before you walk in 
pair it, mm. have it stack it with your vibe check, right? Have some water, figure out how you're feeling and then walk into whatever the event is. Yeah, I like that. Um, the holiday for versus hollow week, which we covered, right? So um, as you're mindfully going into those events, it doesn't necessarily have to be every single day that you indulge in all the things. Um, it's, it's really easy to use that as an excuse, though, Amber. <laughs> I mean, yes, but also I'm going to go back to choose your heart on that one, because if you party it up for seven days, I can assure you you're going to be dealing mm -hmm. with some other um, <laughs> some yeah, other. Issues. There's going to be some fallout and some there's going to be a little life. fallout. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, intentional movement. So this is one we haven't covered yet today, um, and it's it doesn't have to be um, some grueling workout where you're trying to outwork whatever treat you had because that's not real life. That's not that's not healthy. Yeah. It's not helpful. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, but being intentional about moving your body every day throughout the day. One of the ways I do this is, and I think I've mentioned this in a previous podcast. Um, if I am at an event after dinner, I generally get up and go for a walk. And I mean, it yeah. could be a really short walk, but 10 minutes outside okay. before, yeah, before I hit the dessert table is very helpful for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, I mean, that's gonna... a great habit. I feel like a lot of people tend to, I, I mean, I've noticed like Thanksgiving traditions where people will go for a walk like before or after dinner. And I kind of yeah. love that. I like I that tradition. Too. Yeah. And it's good. You get a little bit of energy out. You know, again, I have tiny humans, so I take the tiny humans on the walk. Yes, wear um, them out. And we just <laughs> wear them out a little bit. Um, yeah, and then I the last it. one, uh, and I've said it throughout this episode, and I hope you hear me say it more often, um, is to treat, not cheat. I hear people say, oh, it's my cheat meal. Oh, it's my cheat day. Oh, it's my cheat season. Like, whatever. We're not going to view eating as cheating. Like you can treat yourself, you can enjoy the indulgence, yeah. um, but setting your, putting that thought in your brain that you're cheating by doing something you enjoy, just yeah. it furthers the cycle of unhealthy food relationships. I definitely agree with that. We always talk about the role of internal dialogue and you're so right. Our words matter. Our words mm -hmm. matter and how we're communicating them to ourselves. It, it, you're right. Saying I'm cheating, which I, to be honest, I've never said that, but I've also, <laughs> I've never said that I'm, I'm, I'm cheating. I'm having a cheat day, but I, I think it's because I, I have, I have cheat days every day. <laughs> you just, just have a very different treat approach myself. to food. You I treat, treat myself. I treat myself on the daily. <laughs> well, hey, I do too. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to lie. There is a treat every day. It just looks different every day. Yeah, um, and that's okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we're not here to be punishing ourselves with food. You know, no or way. Holding food or life is stressful not... enough. Screw that. Yes. Amen. Claps. All of the things. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Lindsay, this was fun. I appreciate this topic. I'm glad that we're able to share this, especially in the holiday season. Hopefully the folks listening um, gleaned some helpful tidbits or ideas or just, you know, that extra little piece of encouragement. You can do this. You can thrive through yep. the holiday season. You can have um, health goals during the holiday season and they can look um, well balanced. It doesn't have yes. to be what what we did in the nineties, right? <laughs> That's right. And you don't have to wait until New Year's negative to to say, hey, now I'm gonna get my diet on the right track. It's like this it's more of a lifestyle. And it is, so yes. And and if you go into it with like, oh, I'm just going to diet it's again, as we mentioned previously, it's just going to feed into that stress cycle within which then just feeds into more of that emotional eating and so forth and so forth. So let's yeah. get off the and hamster wheel now before the holidays. And I agree. Take a There's new never going to be a perfect time. There's never going to be a perfect day. Next Monday is no better or worse than today. So definitely please don't wait till January to make healthy changes or healthy choices um, and stop looking at as cheats because that's just not it. It's true. Treat that's yourself every life. day. Treat, Treat yourself. yourself every day. <laughs> <laughs> just have I moderation. That's all. Yes. All right, guys and dolls. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of what the Fox podcast, and we will see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday. And we all say everything is going to be just fine. It's going to fall into place. The sun is going to set on your terrible day.